This is Trinity Sunday, the three persons of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This service was recorded at my grandparents' house and other locations with physical distancing in place. So be kind and stay safe, everyone. Well, hello and welcome again. Uh, wonderful to be together, worshiping together today. And uh, we of the parish of Central Saanich worship on the Wasanic and Coast Salish uh, people's lands, and for that we give thanks and recognize our journey of reconciliation together. Uh, we hope that you are uplifted by the service today and that it's meaningful in your life. Thank you for joining us. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Part of our service that we like to do each Sunday is a prayer for children. And I pray this prayer for children generally, worldwide, in our neighborhoods, and uh, children who we know and young people who we know that are in our parishes. We pray for uh, kids that have gone back to school this week and for others. God, uh, be with our children. Be with uh, young people in this world. Let them stay innocent. Let them be protected from some of the sadness of this world and challenges of this world, and yet uh, have them be educated well by their parents, by their teachers, and by others in their lives. And stay close to them, God, and shine your lantern in their lives. Amen. Good morning. Our first lesson is from Genesis chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, the earth was a formless void, and the darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on the earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. And God in the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them to the, in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. 
and God saw that it was good. There was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. Let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created great, the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters of the sea, and let the birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God saw, said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you pl every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the ground, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw that everything he had made, and indeed it was very good. That there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of heaven and the earth which they were created. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Psalm 8 O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth! You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. A reading from the 13th chapter of the second letter to Corinthians, beginning at the 11th verse. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put all things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. creation of water, earth, and sky, the 
heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. I stumble in the darkness. I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. Today's Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, 
and always. I cannot breathe. Those three words have informed our week in such a strong way that we can barely ignore it. I want to start with a short reading. From our very first breath, we are in relationship. With that indrawn draft of air, we become joined to everything that ever was, is, and ever will be. When we exhale, we forge that relationship by virtue of the act of living. Our breath commingles with all breath, and we are a part of everything. That is the simplest fact of things. We are born into a state of relationship. Our ceremonies, our rituals, our liturgy, our guides to lead us deeper into that relationship with all things. And this is a big and important lesson. It's by Richard Wagamese from a book called Embers. May he rest in peace. This week, um, it goes without saying that the events of America, the death of George Floyd, who we prayed for last Sunday in our service, and the circumstances surrounding that are on the minds of many, many people. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but on the other hand, I think it's very important that we think about it. I think that uh, we were charged by the preacher at his memorial service to not um, hold him as a token of, of uh, what has taken place, but on the other hand, to acknowledge. And so I want to acknowledge and, and pray that he would rest in peace and that uh, God would bring comfort to his family and mercy and justice to our world. And I do want to add to that that uh, two things this week that struck me about it, and I'll come back to something Canadian in a moment, but N.T. Wright and Michael Curry, both men in their 60s, lamented the fact that their own fathers who had been um, preachers or religious people of some sort um, in 1968 were lamenting uh, violence and racism and major problems in the world. And both of them at age 67, 68 years old are lamenting that they're now living through the same problems and here we are. And as those two scholars, well known to us and, and uh, well known in the world, lament, so too do we. This week I invited us to look at Psalm 130 and to uh, hold close to our hearts and listen for God, uh, what it means to lament and to cry out and to ask God for mercy. I have to acknowledge that I come from a place of, uh, of uh, white privilege and of a socioeconomic bracket privilege that not everyone has, and we have to acknowledge that, I believe, as well. And I want to acknowledge the Canadian component in this. Only this week is a murdered and missing Indigenous women's and girls final report uh, became a year old, and they're lamenting the fact that very little action has been, take, been taking and challenging us yet again to take action. And even in the midst of COVID-19, and I think that the time has come for us to take action, and it's very interesting because the very first recommendation it makes is to implement and live out the 94 calls to action which come from an earlier time from the TRC. So as we live into all of that this week, uh, let us carry it, let us remember it, and let us realize that that Holy Spirit that we pray to breathe into our lives comes in many forms and activates us in many different ways. It is also... Trinity Sunday and I want to speak to that and I think that we are very privileged this week in the readings as we always are it seems but uh, the, the Genesis reading that you will have heard and it's a long reading we know that but it's it's so anchored in what it means to be the triune God what the triune God means to us that story of creation that story that in the beginning there was uh, a void, a dark void, and then the, a wind or spirit of God hovered over it. So it seems to indicate so clearly that God the Creator, God the Holy Spirit, and if we study John 1, 1 to 18 and talk about um, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was 
very much pointing to Jesus being the Word, that ties Jesus to uh, creation as well. So this triune God is represented to us in creation. And if you're looking for a deep theological explanation for the Trinity, I commend to you a reflection from yesterday, actually, that the Reverend Dr. Brett Kane will have posted on our website, and it gets into much more detail than I have, I'm able to and have time to get into here today. But just to say that it's a journey from the head to the heart. Short journey, maybe 18 inches, but a difficult journey nonetheless because we want to think it out. And actually it's a beautiful thin place of mystery somewhere between complexity and simplicity. So I'll say this to you, for most of us we like to experience the triune God as opposed to explain it. So I'll liken it to if you have a young person in your life, a child, or you have a neighbor or a friend and somebody says, so who is this God that you worship? Tell me about God. Why is God so important in your life? How do we actually articulate that? What is your God language? And boy, if we get into the big, long, complicated explanations, we usually lose people. A couple of key phrases that came from, from Brett's words the other day is God in front of us, God beside us, God within us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So as we speak to that child, that friend, that person who genuinely wants to know, and we think about how to say it, I guess it's like saying that, well, I know where I come from, I've been created by God, and I believe that to be true, and I believe that I'm a co-creator with God, I can live into an incarnational theology, is the words that we use, which simply means that I can live knowing that God is in me and I'm part of creation whether it's caring for a garden, nurturing a child, caring for your neighborhood, or running for political office, whatever it is we may be doing or called to ordain ministry, um, that we're part of co-creation and that we must treat it respectfully, therefore. And I do think, too, that then, as Anglicans, we have this great mantra, which is, if you want to know what we believe, come and worship with us. And that, that sort of holds us tight, and it allows us to learn over time, you know, so the back to the friend asking you who God is, yes, we can say something about this God inside us and this God who created us and this Holy Spirit that guides and empowers and, and is embedded in our hearts and comes along us, with us and everything that we do. Um, but actually to engage them in worship is somewhat more effective. They'll hear words like, blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, we give you thanks and praise because in the, in the mystery you disclose to us, you reveal your glory as the glory of your Son and the Holy Spirit, three persons, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in everlasting glory. So these three persons of the Trinity, each equal to the other, not one more important than the other, but relationship and tight together. And so we, as human beings, when we live together and as we work together and as we spend time together, we look to model our lives on Jesus, and yet we also look to model our lives on the triune God and to model our lives as disciples of Christ and of people of the way, if you want to use that terminology. And we trust that God is with us through peaks and through valleys, through celebrations, through sadnesses, through loss, through amazing and wonderful epiphanies and cherished dreams in providential encounters, and that the courage of our faith may sometimes be put to test, and yet that God comes along beside us. So the elevator speech, what it is we say to our friend, is God loves me, God loves you, I know that God loves me, and if God is love, then I'm called to give back that love into the world, I'm called to be vulnerable, I'm called to be open, and I'm called to trust in God always. And so today, it's my prayer for each of us that that's how we could live, and that we could accept the grace of God even when we fall short, and when we sin, that we know that God picks us up, dusts us off, and moves us along. So today, this, whole, this Trinity Sunday, I pray that you have a good day and that you're blessed. Amen.
As we've reflected on these words, we now move, move to our affirmation of faith. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Now we'll move to a time of prayer together. Mike will facilitate us in that. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your sustaining love, which you have shown us by our good health and our overall generally well-maintained lifestyle, considering our times. We lift to you for your guidance and protection, Lord, like Asia and the Cana de Mexico, Demas and the people of Holy Trinity, Souk, and our leaders of the Anglican Church across Canada. We pray for the well-being of Lon, our parish rector, the clergy and parishioners, and all who give assistance in the parish of Central Saanich. Your guidance and grace are humbly asked for, Lord, as we decide on a new shepherd for our diocese. And your continued grace is asked for over all students who are graduating from different levels of education. Bless those who teach and bless those who learn. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your spirit of peace to influence the hearts and minds of the rioters across the United States, as well as those who are like-minded in Canada, that there be a proper time for mourning, not vengeance, a time for reconciliation, not hatred, a time for education and communication, not indignation, a time for inclusiveness, not allocation by color or creed. Now please, through the week, lift up those in the bulletin who require various healing prayers. We never know when me or when we might be the only ones praying for them. Now I ask your prayers for all those that are on your hearts. And Heavenly Father, we all know what the police officers in, the, in that U.S. city have done. But you, are, you love them as well. So we ask for your grace to be upon them, and especially upon their families and all those concerned in that situation. Grant us, Lord God, the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we may continue our knowledge in Christ, and expand his name in our midst. At all times, may we give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, in all things, in all places. Amen. Amen.
Father, we praise, we praise you through your, your word and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. You created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you, those you love, and those for whom you pray, this day and forever. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve God. Hallelujah. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again someday, May God hold you in the palm of his hand. May the memories that we have shared linger on and on. Thank you for joining us this morning. Clergy contact information is on the screen or available on the parish website, parishcs.ca. Thank you for your continued support of the parish with your offerings and for dropping them off at either, at either of the church offices or mailing them. It is truly appreciated. No Zoom coffee time this morning, but do consider coming for a drive in prayer and blessing with clergy, following the directions on the screen or website. Be kind and stay safe.